after the Jays open up the series yesterday with a nice 7-3 victory behind Vladimir Guerrero Jr.'s insane two-run shot. They go out there today in the ball game and they lose 4-3 to the Seattle Mariners. And Vladimir Guerrero Jr., after his first at bat, uh, nothing, no problem there, then makes a play uh, in the field, crossing in front of Bo Bichette, throws on the first, not in time. Looks like he's favoring his, his leg a little bit. He ends up leaving. He finishes the inning, but ends up leaving the game. Great. But remember, we still have Bo Bichette, right? Because we'll get to that in a second here. So top of the second inning, uh, Keon Broxton uh, hits a, a sacrifice fly, and uh, that scores the first run of the ball game. Jays down one nothing. We saw the same thing yesterday, though. However, the Jays were down 2 nothing yesterday, so we've been there, done that before. And we go to the bottom of the second, and Billy McKinney comes up with uh, Smoke and Derek Fisher on, and he singles to right field. Smokey comes in to score, Fisher to third, and the Jays have tied the ball game just like that. Right? That's what you like to see. You want to get right on the board. And then in the top of the fourth inning, uh, Austin Nola comes up, and it's a 1-2 pitch from uh, Trent Thornton deep and gone to left field, and that breaks the tie. It's now a 2-1 lead. In that same inning, Keon Broxon sacrificed fly to Billy McKinney, so two sack flies, scoring two of their three runs so far, and it is a 3-1 Seattle Mariners lead. In the bottom of the fifth inning, oh, Bo Bichette comes up, and oh, after the 0 for yesterday, after the Jays got really good offense yesterday, and he was the only guy in the lineup to not get a hit, he goes up there in the bottom of the fifth inning, gets a 2-2 pitch, down and out of the strike zone. Again, we saw it from Vladdy yesterday with a down and in curve ball that no one in their right business, uh, no one in their right mind has any business of hitting that ball out of the ballpark. He did that. Bobachek gets a, gets a change up, and it looks like he's golfing. I mean, it's down the middle, but it's, it's down and out of the strike zone, and he crushes it to left center field, and it's gone, cutting the deficit down to 3-2. And we're like, hey, it's a one-run ball game. We're only in the fifth. Lots of ball to play here. Bottom of the seventh, Reese McGuire comes up, and he crushes one down the line, and it's gone, and we're tied at three. And then it's a whole new ball game. The Blue Jays coming up clutch. The young guys getting it done. McKinney with an RBI single. Bo Bichette with the, with the solo shot, and then Reese McGuire tying it up making it 3-3. However, in the top of the eighth inning, off of Tim Meza, Kyle Seager crushes one down the right field line, and it goes off the foul pole, and it's gone, breaking the tie 4-3, and that is how the game finishes. And, you know, it's a tough one, not just because the Jays lost, but because Vladdy went down with an injury. I mean, obviously, he's playing some great baseball lately and swinging the bat extremely well, and especially after we're all ooing and eyeing after that crazy, um, after that crazy home run he had yesterday. But apparently, he will undergo an MRI uh, on his knee. I think it was or his left knee. I think it was. Yeah, le- he he left the game with left knee discomfort. That is what Charlie Montoyo had to say. So. Uh, Again, I think we'll find out either later today or tomorrow the details about Vladdy. And the good news is for me that he was able, if if it happened when he was running to first base or whatnot, he he was able to go out the next inning. He made the play, um, even though even though he was safe at first base, and he did finish the inning. You know, if it was that bad, I'm hope I'm I mean, he would probably take himself out, or he'd be limping around enough that the trainers would come out and take him off the field. So. I'm, I'm hoping with that being the case, it's not serious, but we won't know until the results come in from the MRI uh, on Vladdy's knee. So uh, we're kind of all holding our breath here a little bit right now on Vladimir Guerrero Jr. And obviously the Jays losing today didn't really help that, but Bo Bichette did go deep and he had a great ball game, was two for five in the game with an RBI, obviously off the home run and he scored the run as well. His batting average is now 349 on the year and on base of 400. Uh, Bo Bichette's putting some crazy looking young season together. Obviously the numbers have come more down to earth lately, but it's what you expected. You can't expect the guy to hit over 400 uh, for, you know, for the season or first career or whatnot. So he's still hitting 349 on base of 400 over a 19 game span to start your career. That's not half bad if you ask me. And he's done a great job there. Uh, Brain and Drury coming in for uh, Vladdy went one for three in the ball game. Kevin Biggio went one for four. A lot of one first the rest of the way. Justin Smoke was one for two. Walked twice. Uh, Derek Fisher had a rough one though. 0 for three with a couple strikeouts and he walked. McKinney with the RBI single. And uh, Reese McGuire who, I mean, look, I didn't expect much offensively from this guy when being, being recalled, obviously only at like a 240, 250 hitter there in AAA. You don't expect a whole lot from him at the big league level. No, I mean, again, it's I'd say it's about two games 
that has really boosted his average. The one where he went four for four, I think it was against the Yankees. And then two for four today with an RBI, obviously, off the home run that he had. He's hitting 265. The reason you don't want to look at those numbers maybe too much is because when your batting average is the exact same number as your on-base percentage, it tells me not only are you hitting the ball pretty good, but, yeah, he has not walked at all in the 10 games that he's played. You don't really look into it too much, but, hey, he's swinging the bat well as Reese McGuire in the 9-hole. You're seeing him and Danny Jansen swinging the bat great lately. Uh, it's nice to see, you know, because then you feel very, very uh, confident, I guess, uh, throwing e any catcher out there in any situation. And seeing Reese McGuire throw D. Gordon at second base, you see that quick release from him? It was like... Bang, bang, right right to the hand and right to the base. And it was a, a little bit of a high toss, but a great tag. And, and what a play to get a speedster like D. Gordon out at second base. It was, it was an incredible shot by, uh, by Reese McGuire. And that shows you the young catchers this Jays team, this Jays organization has. The reason I'm saying that, not only do you have Danny Jansen, who we know can throw really well, who's got some home run pop, as we've seen over the last few months or so. He's got 12 home runs now, and you've now seen Reese McGuire hit a few home runs. You're seeing that kind of thing. And, oh, yeah, we forgot about Alejandro Kirk, the guy in uh, high uh, advanced A Dunedin who has been playing in s exceptionally well. And, obviously, one of the young studs down in Lansing, Gabriel Moreno, another catcher, uh, hitting extremely well down there in Lansing. So, again, the Jays look pretty good when it comes to catchers for the future and how things are going to play out there. It, it looks really good. All right, pitching-wise, look, Trent Thornton, uh, he was a little shaky early on. Obviously gave up the... Uh, the the the, 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 the th that two run inning, but he gave up three runs over the first four innings, and that looked really rough. However, even when the Blue Jays tied the game, or sorry, made it a three two ball game, Trent Thorne held the team in it. They, they, he was allowed, he was able to put up some zeros when he needed to. Yeah, he six innings of five hit, five hit, three runs, struck out three and walked four. I don't like the walk four because you know what that does. Pitch count goes right through the roof, and obviously, you know, when you're giving up sacrifice flies, those are tough runs to give up, obviously, and those are two of the three runs that he gave up. So he, I wouldn't say it was a bad outing from him. He dropped his ERA four points to 5.30, still not the greatest, um, but for Trent Thorne, again, you know, we, we talk about innings pitched, giving you innings. He's thrown 120 innings this year. I mean, he's probably going to be up around that 150 mark, maybe even a little bit more than that. So I like what we've, what we've seen from Trent Thornton in his first year as a Blue Jay, but you want to take those strides in the next season. And those are the things we're going to look at throughout the offseason when it comes to him. Sam Gavilio went a clean inning, didn't allow a hit, didn't walk a batter, and got a strikeout. Tim Mesa came out and threw two-thirds, obviously gave up the home run to Kyle Seeger to break the tie, and he picks up the loss, his second loss in the year for Tim Mesa. And Derek Locke, can we talk about this guy for a second? A month tomorrow was the last day that Derek Law actually gave up an earned run. He went an inning and a third again today, didn't allow a hit, walked one, but struck out a batter and didn't allow any runs to cross. This guy's ERA at that time was like 660 or 670 or in that really high six range. Well, after today's ball game, it's 4.7. And I know, you know, again, Derek Law has been a guy that has not had a good MLB track record and for the first little while as a Blue Jays not been good but over the last month he has been basically unhittable I mean you look at that stretch where he's been on I'm gonna go through it right here with you guys uh you know he is uh where is he here yeah in that stretch he's given up what like five or six hits in that span of probably like 15 innings or something like that Derek Law like I said has been basically unhittable he's been fantastic and you're starting to see Charlie Montoyo throwing him out there in bigger situations. You've seen a couple save opportunities for Derek Law. You you saw in a one-run ball game there today, you're seeing him go out there. Earlier on in the year when he was when he was awful, I mean, you're seeing him go out there in 13-2 games and 9-0 games and, and games that don't really matter to so get him some work in. But he did well in those times, so he's gotten opportunities to pitch in the, big, in the high, more high-leverage situations. And he's doing a good job. So they're going to keep running him out there day in, day out when they need to. And I wasn't a huge Derek Law fan for quite some time, I do have to say. But he's pitching great, and you got to give the guy credit, all right? So the finale of the series for the Blue Jays and Mariners goes tomorrow afternoon to 107 first pitch uh, at Rogers Center. And, um, oh my goodness, uh, Kikuchi? I'm going to say Kikuchi. Uh, I think that's the, the pitcher for the Seattle Mariners there tomorrow. Uh, he's not very good. Uh, uh, 126 innings pitched. He's pitched a lot this year, but an ERA 5.56. Uh, that's not very good. So if you're the Blue Jays and you're looking to win another series, 
you have a pretty good matchup when it comes to that. And from what I can tell, it looks like it's going to be a bullpen day for the Blue Jays. However, Brock Stewart's actually pitching today for the um, for the uh, Buffalo Bison, so it's probably going to be a Thomas Pannone bullpen day. We're probably going to see Wilmer Font go out there early on in the ballgame tomorrow, see Thomas Pannone come in relief and kind of see how it goes from there. But that's in the finale there at 107 there tomorrow. All right, so guys, we're going to talk about quickly about the minor leagues before we wrap this baby up. All right, in Buffalo... All right, they're playing against the Durham Bulls right now, and it's a 2-2 ball game. Like I said, Brock Stewart on the mound for the Bisons there in this game. And Santiago Espinal, we talked about it in the video I posted earlier today. Espinal's been swinging the bat a lot better as of late. I mean, he had a tough start to his AAA career, but over the last little bit, he's been doing a really good job, and he starts the game today one for one with a couple RBIs. So his batting average jumped to 238, starting to get to more reasonable numbers. And uh, Santiago Espinal doing a really good job there. At, uh, at Buffalo, and um, so we got the New Hampshire Fisher Cats are playing today against the Portland, uh, I think it's the Sea Dogs, I think it is, and oh, okay, so Hector Perez was on the mound, this guy, I mean, he was one of our number, he's still a pretty good prospect for us, problem is he's having an awful outing down there so far, he's pitched a third of an inning, hasn't allowed a hit, but he's had an earned run, he's walked three guys in the first inning, and he's got a strikeout, so he's had a tough time so far as Hector Perez, but we're going to see if he can turn things around there uh, for the New Hampshire Fisher Cats there in this one, uh, this there this afternoon, or I guess this evening now. And uh, down in Dunedin for the Dunedin Blue Jays, Demi Lamoye is one for one, Samad Taylor one for one with an RBI, and Alejandro Kirk, like we talked about him earlier on, he's, he's 0 for 0, he's also walked once in the game, uh, his on base percentage is up near 400 down there in uh, Dunedin, so he's doing an, a fantastic job, and that's, that's game two of the doubleheader, they've Finished up the first leg uh, earlier today, and my boy Josh Winkowski, we talked about it there earlier, uh, had a tough time. Four air runs over four innings, so he had a tough one. But again, still one of my favorite young players for the Blue Jays, and I can't wait to see him continue to progress for the Blue Jays. All right, so guys, you know what? That is going to do it for this one. If you guys enjoyed this video and you guys enjoyed, um, well, not, not the ball game today, smack that like button to appreciate that. Hit the subscribe button if you guys have not already. Comment down below your thoughts on the game, your thoughts on the video, your thoughts on the Vladimir Guerrero Jr. Uh, leg tightness or leg discomfort, or what are your guys' thoughts on that whole spiel when it comes to Vladdy? Did you see anything specifically? Um, did you hear anything specifically? Anything you guys want to talk about, let me know in the comments below when it comes to Vladdy, Bo, this, the young core on this team, the young core coming up, everything about the Toronto Blue Jays, let me know in the comments below. And check out my main man, Mo Buckets, on Twitter, Blue Jays Wave on Instagram, guys. Go check him out. Um, like I said earlier in the, in the video earlier today that uh, I hope to be on this podcast next week talking about the Blue Jays, hopefully talking about some good things going on with this team and, and progression continuously from the young players of the Toronto Blue Jays, all right? And uh, Twitter is down below. Follow up, send me a DM, guys. Do all that great stuff. And I'll talk to you in the in the finale tomorrow afternoon back in a normal dojo. It's It's been all over the place over the last week. You guys all know that. And uh, we're finally back to normal, though. Tomorrow afternoon's video will be back in a normal location for quite some time. But uh, it's, it's going to be nice, all right? So 107 first pitch at Rogers Center. The finale of the three-game series against... The Seattle Mariners, I'm assuming Wilmer Font will get the open and Thomas Pinnell will come in to clean it up afterwards. All right, so guys, thank you guys so much for listening and watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Talk to you guys then.